Hello, Faze. How are you? Everybody doing okay? I'm trying to stop, prevent a sneeze. Everyone doing okay, Zig, my trading warrior brother? How are you? Thanks for your consistent great efforts to promote our webinars on Twitter every day with great sayings, great trading advice. Uh, Wallacear, nice to meet you. Hi, Pete. Nice to meet you. Okay, so yesterday, a couple of Turnaround Tuesday candidates worked. They were basically the same one. It was uh, to short the dollar and to buy euro. And it took most of the session. Didn't happen until late session where we got this one, two, three up here. And then it tried to hold this 97.20 level. It broke down last night. Um, not unexpected for it to hold here at 97. Uh, but I do expect this rally to fail. In fact, when I look at a little longer term chart, uh, I think there's potential if we start taking out 97 for initially six and a half would be 670 to six and a half would be next starting point. But I'm going to keep an open mind and think that we could have something like this from here and we could even really retest this 9580 level. So we'll see a day at a time. And as I teach, if you were doing up there uh, shorting in the mid 40s, you should at least be booking half of it right now and be in a BE riskless trade. And uh, so the same really situation in Euro. So Euro look, a lot of these are right at moving averages. It's 1250 level. Uh, if this is going to continue, uh, you know, Blake pointed out 1220 yesterday where they could begin to squeeze people. Um, you know, we didn't even take out the stops. I, I think eventually we will. But, you know, uh, if we get through this level, next level is about 113.10. So this is also giving uh, S&Ps a, a big lift, uh, NASDAQ a big lift. Right, everything a big lift. You know, market uh, likes risk on weak dollar, so it could probably make some hay until it turns. Although I, you know, I would not be uh, chasing S and P's at the 280, 288 level. And if you look at the Nasdaq here, it's making a lower high. I think you could short the Nasdaq right here risk 100 points um i wanted to talk about the yen uh, although we got over the 61.8 level uh we're starting to run out of a little juice maybe it's going to try 78.6 here up at 11.60 back under 11.20 i think you have something uh if we do get risk off uh you know it's very possible the yen could come off too and then We've reached a lot of objectives that people had a long time ago in the crude oil market. And, you know, it's really flat with the market up strongly and risk on. So it's the first day it's done that. But normally on a day like this with crude, with the S&Ps up 18 handles, crude would be up at least, you know, 80, 90 cents a buck, something like that. Give me a why if you're with me. You with me on the dollar, the euro, and now crude. You don't have to agree with the analysis just so you understand it. Because when I'm doing this, I want you to get the whys. Thank you, Pete. Because the whys are so important so that you could learn and repeat this stuff without anybody. So, you know, our goal here in FACE is not to make you dependent on us or anybody but independent of everyone. So anytime you're taking a pattern and play trade from us, you got to read about the whys. Yeah, it's nice if the trade works out and money falls into your account, but it's even important to read the whys of all the rationales. And, you know, pick one or two styles, just like I say, you know, don't. Uh, I'm not a big believer in trading 10 different instruments at a time. Uh, I think if you narrow your focus, I've mentored some people and it's helped them just to focus on a few markets at a time 
instead of, you know, you could screen them all, but focus your attention on a few markets at a time. And what you may want to do as a subscriber is focus on a couple of styles that suit your personality that you have an understanding. You have four, five to select from. You know, maybe you want to be, you don't want to trade all the time. And you just want real big position swing trades and you go with Stelios's macro, right? Uh, if you want to be a little bit more active, uh, you get a lot of uh, one and four hour charts from Grega and Andre and Blake and Steve. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, and I think tomorrow's our two year anniversary. So uh, we were going to do something, but there's some personal stuff going on with the team. Um, and it's helped you in any way. Best way to say thank you to us besides words, and we appreciate words, is to become a subscriber. The, uh, the link is right here in the webinar. And also want to mention our sponsors, Justin and Trent at Forest Park FX that can help you get uh, generate a little revenue flow for either paying for the subscription, I almost said prescription, and they're a broker of brokers, so they're gonna find their best fit for you. And also, even if you have one account, uh, it's an advantage. I know guys that have scalping accounts, swing accounts, uh, spreading accounts, and they have different brokers for uh, different reasons. So um, you got to call Trent and Justin and at least introduce yourself, say hi, and let them know where you're trading and uh, ask them uh, about spreads and ask about platforms and do you want an ECN broker? Uh, they're pros. They're pros and ethical, um, which is you know kind of a rare combination in uh, this environment of internet propaganda and uh, scam artists and charlatans. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we work with people that reflect our mission, which is to help all of you. And I just want to say one more thing. A new trader friend of mine said that, you know, he was floundering around. I think I've told you guys already, but he found Blake, I think, on a chat with traders. That guy Aaron, I think, interviewed some of the best traders. And uh, and then he was here from the beginning of Forex Analytics and said it was a game changer. And you know what? It was because I've seen him trade. He's excellent. So if you're struggling a little bit, you, you have to invest. You're going to pay to learn or you're going to pay the market. Better to pay to learn than to pay Ivy League tuitions to Mr. Market, in my opinion. So, uh, with that being said, uh, Blake, how did the uh, the shoot go? I saw a couple of shots, and you looked great. And I, I couldn't help it, bro. I, I, you know, I'm sit, I'm I'm looking at you, and I'm going, hmm. I wonder when the last time Blake wore a suit in his home office. Yeah, it huh? just doesn't happen. It just doesn't <laughs> doesn't happen. I, you know, it's it's did, funny when, did I, your, when I, your sons come in and go, "Where's my dad?" Well, no, no, they were <laughs> fortunately at school, but the the, yeah. the camera crew came to my house and uh, and I was wearing a t-shirt and flip flops, and I'm like, "Don't worry, I got uh, I got clothes to change into." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, so, just struck, it just struck me funny. That's all. Yeah, it's all, it's I, know, all good. I know. I know how we all dress in uh, our home offices. I joke. Uh, I love my commute, Blake. And uh, which bathrobe should I wear today? Uh, you should wear the the um, the the pink, <laughs> the pink Hefner, one. No, the Hugh Hefner one with the Escott. How about that? Yeah, I, I I think the pink one would be great for you. All right, all right, buddy. Well, that's my name, Pinker. <laughs> Pinker, there you go. Uh, hey, we got a couple minutes before the ADP, um, so really quick, I'm gonna let me let me pull up the uh, charts here really quick. Um, so if you guys um, if you guys didn't hear, uh, we have well, there's there's an FT article um, in overnight uh, suggesting that that uh, China and the U.S. are very close to putting together a deal. There's um, and that that's that's uh, that that 
explains the you know explosion higher uh, in risk appetite equities. Uh, yen pairs, you know, you can see like the Aussie yen. Uh, we had uh, generally better data out of Australia too with retail sales, um, but all the yen pairs had spiked up as a result. Uh, when when that FT article uh, uh, um, was released, and I knew that was the kind of the risk of the market, I had to I had to pull the uh, euro yen uh, short pattern in play. We had a pattern in play short against this 38 percent retracement. I took it off before uh, the stops got hit, and then you know the DAX didn't open in time, so that, um, that that invalidated the pattern in play. And I took the New Zealand dollar that was short uh, off. Um, as a result as well but but uh you know again this this is just an ft article that's out and there's a there's a summit happening this weekend so um you know there's a good chance that over this weekend you know us uh, china um uh might be some sort of trade deal uh completion or at least a you know a, a, a agreement in principle so um but there, there's a couple agreements as far as uh, i think it's enforcement and um, uh, um, oh gosh, it just uh, my mind just blank. But enforcement and and uh, some of the tariffs, they you know China wanted it, all the intellectual be, property, Blake. N no, it's an, an no. I don't think that was the the what was some of the big sticking points. Now there's you yeah. know again okay. the, I don't know what has has or has not been agreed to, but just some of the major issues that uh, most of the major issues have been have have been tackled from what i understand so okay. so with that being said you have to be a little bit careful with um you know trying to trade things that might be risk averse uh, at least over the course of the next week uh, i would suggest now um let's you know talk about uh, some of these setups first of all we got this euro uh, quite possibly a double bottom setting up here and um you can see let me grab this uh let me remove that so you you have this slightly higher low okay we came out of a descending wedge and the euros you know had, had a bullish move coming out of the descending wedge um the cable you know we were up against this trend line, I actually got limited into a position in the cable at 131.61, and I got out of it just as soon as I got up. I'm like, oh, it's up like 20 pips, and I just took it off. But I, it's, it wasn't something that I was – I had kind of a, 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 a stop entry to get long, and I got long, and then I'm like, you know, when I got up, I'm like, eh, I'll wait till you know, to deal with this a little bit later as uh, we see some, you know, more Brexit news. As the, I, I was thinking that maybe it might rally based on some Brexit news overnight. It didn't, um, but it's it stalled. But I think that the risk could be for some continuation. Um, let's uh, let's go to the dollar yen really quick, just because we have ADP numbers coming out. And, the, and I'll, I'll be here for the ADP numbers uh, as, I, as I usually am. Uh, we are challenging this underside of this. Well, this is a trend line. Of a channel, so it, it it you can see there's the channel top, here's the channel bottom, but the reason why this is significant is you can see the rejection here, rejection here, rejection here. So what that actually means is, on a strong number, if we break out, we should go see 112 and above uh, on a good number, and uh, you know on a bad number, then obviously we can you know turn lower. Uh, as well, it, it, you know, this is I think is very pivotal for the dollar yen, and I think you can trade it pretty um, much as such. I mean, you know, you trade a breakout or a breakdown, uh, depending on how strong or how weak this data is. Now we are looking for 184,000. No, 184,000 was prior 175,000, and I hear Stelios. Hi, uh, yes, hi. Uh, the calendar I have is showing 184 expected, but it doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah, you know, I thought it was 184, but I see uh, Bloomberg has 175. So um, that's what their survey is right now, and that might have been some near-term adjustments based on some data that it was uh, has been released. Okay, so th that is week 129,000. So uh, we are seeing a little bit of weakness in the dollar yen, but not a lot. I, you know. You know, you you look around, and you go, well, you know, is the, you know, would you expect the euro to just be a lot higher here, or the the cable to be a lot higher, 
you know, Kiwi didn't move, the Aussie needle didn't move, the dollar yen, I mean, we spiked down and came right back up again. Uh, not a lot of reaction, and that I'm, I have to say, honestly, I'm a little surprised that we haven't seen more of a reaction in the data. Uh, I didn't short the dollar yen, um, not yet anyway. Not, that doesn't mean that I'm not considering it at this moment, but... Um, Maybe the market's waiting for payrolls on Friday. I mean, ADP I, tends to be a little bit more uh, volatile as a number, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you maybe I guess, um, but like, like, look at the dollar Canadian. Like that, that, like that's actually going higher now, <laughs> which is good because I actually picked up some dollar Canadian this morning on a possible double. Oh, I see a revision right. higher as well. Maybe oh, that's why. Yeah, uh, see, actually, the revision just came in at one hundred ninety to seven thousand. You're correct. Yeah. Was that that wasn't out just a moment ago? So. Um, so yeah, I mean, mm, you know what I'm going to do really quick. I am going to take my dollar Canadian off. There we go. I just took that profit there. Uh, just, you know, trying to shore up some positions here. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I'm surprised that the data, you know, it, it, you know that it must have been. I mean, this revision that's really prohibiting the dollar from getting too squirrely at this point. Um, stocks did not have much of a response. You can see the equity markets came down just a hair, but and this is a five-minute chart too, so not uh, not a big response there you know like um, sorry yeah. to interrupt I think oh, sure. you were talking about the US and China before I think that this um, trade deal when it happens is probably going to be one of the ultimate uh, buy the rumor sell the fact uh, uh, cases because you know equities have been rallying on the back of these potential this potential deal for what weeks now and uh, it just feels like as soon as it's announced that we're just gonna drop uh, yeah, you know my 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 inclination has always been, uh, and 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 I'm gonna let me let me let me give you guys my thoughts here, and let me let me remove this blue arrow so I don't you know taint your thinking right now. Um, on a trade announcement, I have been longing to short the Aussie dollar, and you know you know conventional wisdom would tell you hey um uh the the aussie dollar should be a really you know on a on a trade deal because aussie's been pounded it should be a you know um a, a a really good long candidate which i actually think that the first let's just i'm going to elongate the time here uh, the first couple of days it might be it might you know the aussie aussie dollar might actually rip towards you know 73 cents let's just say but I will use that as an opportunity to sell the Aussie because my two cents about um, a trade deal getting done is that once a trade deal gets done, it is ultimately going to be better for the U.S. and worse off for China. You, take, you, you reverse us a year ago. Where are we going to be versus you know, China you know, you know, from a year ago to where we're currently at post trade deal, it's taking it's taking business away. Uh, it's it's China. It's redirecting China business to the U.S. away from Australia, away from New Zealand, away from Europe, away from everywhere else. And Australia, I believe, is going to be ultimately the between Australia and New Zealand, and 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 just keep in mind, I I actually think the Aussie New Zealand and I am long is is a great long, um, you know, and and just so you guys know, I'm I talked about this on um, the Real Vision uh, that's going to be published tomorrow. Just giving you guys some fair warning um, about you know the reversal here in the Aussie New Zealand, but and and I'm already long, and I'm looking to add aggressively actually, so. Um, but I do think that an, 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 an announcement, Stelios, will push up the Aussie dollar. It will probably push up Kiwi dollar, right? And then I'm going to look to fade the heck out of both of those on, on an announcement. That's my plan. So that goes in line with, 
what you're saying. And it, but but th this is the this is the whole timing aspect of it. Stelios is, I believe it is buy the rumor, sell the news. I don't know if it's going to be buy the rumor, sell the news that day. Yeah, you know what? You're you're probably right because the market does make uh, knee jerk reactions, right? So, and I do I do agree with you. You know, when when you say that, um, you know, a trade deal is probably going to be. Uh, positive for the U.S., more positive for the U.S. and China, and we all know how just how correlated Australia and China is. I mean, if you're trading Australia, you are effectively trading China, uh, and um, it sure. is. Uh, I, I agree with you 100%. The, the thing to note, uh, just something that uh, came to my mind now, is that we are actually seeing um, data coming out of China, which is stronger than expected. Now, Steve talked about this yesterday and he said, you know, how much do we believe the data? Well, assuming that they, it's real and we do believe it, it's coming out stronger. Like PMI today, service PMI, really, really a lot stronger than expected out of China. Just something to keep in the back of our minds. How so, about, uh, I mean, guys? Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, ECB tomorrow morning still, you have any fundamental expectations? for what Draghi may say tomorrow? Well, the situation in Europe is, uh, let's put it this way, it's not improving, but, is it? Um, but, but wait, let me, let, me just, let me just preface what uh, uh, Dale asked. Tomorrow is the ECB meeting minutes, which... Uh, minutes, oops, oh, okay, it's, it's not it's, a meeting. It, okay. No, 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 it's, it's the minutes. And, and, and by the way, and, and I'm, I know I mentioned this during the week ahead video, the, the meeting minutes have been increasingly important important more important over the last i would say over the last year and and uh um they and and i still you, you got to correct me if i'm wrong i i believe they only started publishing the meeting minutes over the last like year and a half or two years so correct yes yeah, yes. yeah i think it was it, it was a very late addition to the market but more importantly it's it's it, the market it, get, it gets the market's attention anyway go ahead uh, with what you're going to say about the ecb yeah, I, I, what I was going to say is that you know the uh, what's been coming out of the eurozone is not has not been improving, right? I mean, data has been pretty me, pretty mediocre. Okay, today's PMIs were better than expected, but overall, Germany um, has not been doing well. You know, that's that's a fact. And um, you have issues like Italy and for what's happening in France, which is a little bit underreported um, by the mainstream media. But anyway, you know, it's uh, the eurozone and also. The possibility of uh, the UK exiting maybe on a no deal, you know, these are not good things. So I find it very hard, especially on a global environment where things are turning um, lower. I find it very hard for the ECB to be anything but dovish. And for most central banks, actually, uh, at the moment, uh, with very few exceptions. Yeah, hey guys, uh, just one more thing. Guys, I uh, sent uh, Jim's stuff to you yesterday. And, you know, I know it's real you know, wordy, but I talked to him yesterday and he was talking about uh, like term premium and bonds and, you know, the expectation. Hey, explain, explain to the people at home listening, Jim who, and I know, I know who you're talking oh, about. But. Oh, Jim Welsh. Jim Welsh, who you do bring on as an interview. Right. Um, um, f uh, not enough, in my opinion, because the guy is one of those guys that uh, you, you, when I share, um, I share his thoughts. Like a, if I'm talking to my office in Greenwich, oh, yeah? and I'm okay. talking to those guys, and I'm like, yeah, you know, this guy Jim, blah blah. And even the guys are in the in in my office are like, oh man, that guy, he he really gets it. His his ideas yeah. are good. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, uh, you know, so I was talking to him yesterday, and he was talking about the whole move in bonds down is all about. Uh, I think it's called uh, the term uh, terms, and you get premiums and discounts. And his take is is that the bar is so low. Uh, and there might be one more dip in yields, but the bar is so low that the economic surprise indexes are going to, you know, just like uh, individual companies, lowball their forward guidance so that they beat it, um, that it's going to, uh, he's actually looking for uh, that to happen and uh, yields once they bottom here to do almost exactly or even more what they did a year ago. So, uh, you know, there is potential there for, you know, maybe Draghi to not sound as gloomy and pessimistic as he has been. Anyway, it's a very important, you know, I called him. I said, Jim, can you just give me uh, the bottom line on bonds, what you're thinking here? And he said, Dale, you have to read this thing because he said when he writes, he learned something new. 
Okay, so a pretty important thing for uh, anyone who's interested in interest rates and the economy to check out. And Jim Welsh is, uh, you know, like I said, um, uh, you know, he's really a great um, person that you interview. I, I, I listen to his analysis and his way of thinking. And uh, one of, you know, the, the, you're, you're talking, you know, 40 years of market experience uh, yeah. from that gentleman. He's just, you know, he's just, he's, he's a wealth of knowledge. Um, so anyway, anytime he's on, I think it's great because he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a huge social media presence either. No. So to get him on uh, our, our interviews is just, it, it's a, it's truly a pleasure. I'm going to get him back on, but yeah, I just, I'm just saying that when I talk to him, he never says that to me, Dale, you have to read this one part because it's something I learned too, that accounted for both three and a quarter 10 year yields and what's happening now and what's happening now compared to what happened a few years ago same type of setup so uh just want to let you know awesome all right uh coach thank you so let's uh let's let, let me run through some of these majors uh I, and by the way steve is dealing with some personal issues right now uh, uh with some family issues so uh, i'm going to be here for the next 30 minutes with uh with stelios and coach uh but uh, but i'd really like to yeah Greg is also going to join us in about oh. 15, 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. So let me, let me cruise through some of these majors really quick and just give you some of the key levels that I'm queuing off of today. So let's go, let's start with the Euro dollar. So again, you know, I want to, I want to, um, talk that we are, uh, we are, we've come out of this descending wedge, um, which if you didn't look at the dollar index and the candlestick yesterday, then, you know, shame on you because, this is a what, what what you call a gravestone doji, okay? Gravestone doji, especially after a prolonged rally, is um, a bearish reversal, and, and it's you know it, it actually closed, end up closing like a shooting star. But regardless, it was a it was a bearish reversal candle, and um, you know if you were uh, if you look at like the analysis on the dollar index, the candlestick um, dollar index posted gravestone doji, which is a bearish sign, um, and you can see it. It, 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 it's obviously playing through today. And that when I, when I saw that, I was thinking, okay, well, with the Euro, we have this descending wedge, possible double bottom. Uh, if you, if, and that, that's one of the things that provoked me to, you know, say, you know, I don't want my Kiwi short anymore earlier. All right. So we've seen, we've seen a reversal in the Euro. Now the question is how far are we going to go coming out of a descending wedge? And, um, you know, minimum targets, 38% retracement, uh, uh, you know, which would be up here at 112.81. You know, are we going to get there right now or can we do this today? Uh, you know, it's to be seen, you know, maybe we develop a little inverted head and shoulder pattern uh, and then eventually make our way up there. I don't think that looking at it right now, I don't know if you necessarily want to just start piling in long the euro. Uh, you might might be able to see a little bit of a dip here, especially if we have a little bit of risk aversion. You know, S&Ps are coming off their highs, not saying that the market's going in a complete, you know, reversal here, but we are seeing a little bit of, um, yeah. uh, of a reversal in the, in the stock market. So that could, that could give the dollar a lift. I think that if you get dips to like 112.20 in the euro, you probably want to use that as an opportunity to be on the long side. That's, that's the way I would view this, today uh not saying that i won't get long the euro right now if it just started breaking out i'm just saying that i'd rather play a dip if possible um the cable i you know like i said i had a stop order to buy the pound at 131.61 overnight it, it triggered on the spike up while i was sleeping uh when i got up we were in the 80s i just took it off it was you know like it was a 20 pip gain it wasn't anything that i was going to write home about and i didn't and it was a relatively small position so i didn't you know i didn't even tell anybody i you guys are the first people i'm telling but i, I just got out of it because uh, i thought that if it did rally past this resistance, it was going to be because of uh, some sort of breakthrough in Brexit. It wasn't. It just, you know, just kind of squeezed. So therefore, when I got up, I said, all right, I'll just take it off and I'll revisit it, you know, now that the market's open. I think this is a pretty pivotal area in the cable, this uh, this support zone, you can call it. Uh, what, I'll, what I'll say here is as long as we're above this, uh, you, you know, you can play it to the long side. Got to be a little careful with this down sloping trend line at 132.25. But if we get back below like 131, you know, 30, then, you know, you're, 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 the risk of a move back down here 
is pretty high. And I'm, I'm not married to the cable uh, directionally right now because obviously all the, 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 the Brexit, you know, ongoing shenanigans, it's, you know, it's not worth my time getting too directional here. Uh, Aussie. So the Aussie, uh, I, I originally had this, let me, let me take this line. I originally had it drawn like this, um, this triangle, but I actually think this is, this might be actually more symmetrical and you can see that this is obviously pretty key support in the Aussie. So we're, we're at the upper end of this triangle right now, um, you know, which means that if we break higher, we could break towards 71.50. Now, uh, obviously, if the you know if the if the Aussie breaks this this down sloping trend line here, it's going to be pretty aggressive, uh, and this would be on our you know as a result of you know some China good China news, some favorable Chinese news, whatever. But um, uh, I think you got to watch the Aussie because we did make a slight, ever so slight false breakdown yesterday, and then you know obviously the strong data pushed us back up again. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm long the Aussie New Zealand, but I would not be short the Aussie because, you know, any, any breakthrough in, in, in trade and, and, you know, the, the thing is, is, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to see probably a, a, a pretty big move here. So hold on one second. Uh, okay. All right. So, um, anyway, there, there's the Aussie. So let's take a look at the Kiwi, the Kiwi, you know, we're, we're right up against the 618. I, I am short a little bit of New Zealand dollar, not just the Aussie New Zealand. I actually shorted the New Zealand dollar right around here just because of the 618. But frankly, this thing could continue to squeeze higher. Uh, you know, we, we did, um, have a little false breakdown below this, uh, this trend line here. Okay which, you know, false breakdowns usually lead to breakouts the other direction. I'm trying to play it on the short side, but I'm not going to stick around long. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, I'll be, you know, uh, uh, one of the first to cover. And I don't know if I'd necessarily go long the Kiwi. I'm not a, I'm not a Kiwi bull, especially not after uh, the, what happened with the RBNZ last week. But that doesn't mean that that the kiwi can't squeeze, and um, and, it, and it is possible. I think we get above uh, the 68 cent level, we might squeeze back up towards the uh, you know, 68 50, 68 40. Uh, dollar Canadian, a little bit of a double bottom here. I, I already got out of my dollar Canadian long. I bought it at 133.02, and I sold it at 17. Just kind of playing this. Um, I don't want to get too aggressively long here without crude oil rolling over and crude oil is still green on the day. So, uh, you know, if, if, if crude starts hitting new lows on the day, that might entice me to, to get long the dollar Canadian. I'd have to see crude rolling over stocks rolling over. And <laughs> that, that seems to be asking quite a bit in this market. Uh, the dollar peso actually, you know, I have to admit the dollar peso has held up. Well, I, I, you can see, I have an alarm set at the six one eight. I've been, I, this has been here since yesterday. Whoops. Uh, it's been here since yesterday because frankly, what I was hoping for, which isn't, hasn't happened, but what I was hoping for is a move down here to the 618. Then I was going to get long, you know, off of this support here. So I was, you know, waiting for this to get triggered, um, this alarm so I can, you know, be notified when it gets down there. It just, it's not doing it. And the, the fact of the matter is it's holding up really well despite the risk on nature of this market, which in turn you should be taking into consideration with stocks so strong, emerging market currency is not strengthening. Uh, if this market ever turns lower, like let's say, uh, you know, we get some news that, you know, uh, the meeting between China and the U S is starting to, you know, it's like there's still a lot of sticking points, blah, blah, blah. Stocks turn lower. This dollar max is going to rip. So, um, I'm not long at the moment. I've been playing it to the long side. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, 
observing how strong it is despite the weakness in equities. And that's, you know, Blake, uh, I don't think the market, is, if yields start to go up, because everyone's saying, you know, we've moved to where everyone's expecting a cut sometime this year. Yeah. That the market, that stocks are not priced uh, for higher yields, should that occur. I, I think that might be the catalyst for a correction. Yeah, you know, with yields going up, uh, if yields continue to go higher, and and let's go over to the bond market really quick, as uh, I think a great observation, Dale. You know, money's fickle. You know, where you know money's money's like okay. At what point when yields continue to go up, and that this would be you know, if yields go higher, that and and just so you guys know, this is the bond market, the ten year. Yeah. Uh, we rejected the 618, 161% uh, extension of this last range. Uh, we've been noting in Forex Analytics a drop below uh, 123. The 10-year is going to be a bearish event, which means bonds down, yields up. If yields rally, at some point, you know, people are going to start to go, you know what? I'm, yeah, I'm a little nervous with uh, stocks where they're currently trading. Uh, valuations seem a little high. I, you know, I, I'd be, I, I'm, I'm, I might take advantage of the higher yield, uh, in, in, in the safety of, uh, in the bond market and just, uh, just, you know, um, look to put my money in, uh, you know, bonds and, and take advantage of the, the, the higher yield play there. So, yeah, you're right. I think if yields continue to rise, um, you might see money go from, you know, one basket to another yeah. and, that's entirely possible. I think entirely there's one more possible. pop to new highs, but uh, a lot of Elliotticians, you know, and this is not all, a lot of my stuff is not original thinking, okay? You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, I do intelligence together, and I think there, a lot of people are uh, calling this a four. On wait, a wait, stop, stop, stop real go quick. Ahead. Let, yeah, just go really, ahead. really quick before you go into the, 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 that, what you say as far as intelligence gathering, look, I'm, I'm, you know, that's one of the benefits uh, of, I'm just, and I'm going to, I'm going to plug, I'm going to yeah. plug the chat room. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because there are, you know, about a hundred people in here right now, 106 uh, showing a hundred, 106 are in there right now. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of really talented people in here and I gather probably half of my ideas from the people in here, like the traders in here, um, they'll they'll say, you know, hey, you know, euro dollar is hitting this, you know, trend line, and I I wasn't looking at the euro because I was focused on the Aussie New Zealand, and I look at the euro and go, wow, that's a good trend line, and then I'll post a chart on Forex Analytics, so Forex Analytics subscribers, even if you're not in this chat room, you get notified that hey, the euro's pushing up against this trend line and the relative strength is divergent or whatever. So these, um, the, 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 the <laughs> niddish social <laughs> trading buddy. It is, but the, the, but that's, you know, also the benefit of, sorry guys, I, <laughs> I want to take that off now. Um, uh, take it, taking them off jumbotron for a moment. Uh, but that's the thing about like, you know, uh, your, the, the webinars that we do here, you bring on so many great, people and so many great interviews it and you don't have to i i'm, I'm a big believer that you got to find your own way in the market you don't you know following yeah. Yeah. one person or persons blindly and you know what do i do do i buy or sell and blah 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 you know when do when are they doing it i'm just going to do what they do you're never yeah. going to learn anything that way but Agreed. getting yeah. information from you know several different sources and 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 formulating your own ideas <laughs> based on what you're hearing I think is great. And you have one of the best jobs for that, Dale, is you get to interview so many people and hear so many different uh, voices, not just our team. I'm talking about all of your interviews that you do every single day that, you know, everybody listening here should be listening to as well. Um, you know, you get a lot of great, uh, you, you, so you, when you say, well, I, yeah, that wasn't my original idea. I just do a lot of intelligence gathering. That's smart. That's, that's what, all market participants should be doing. So anyway, okay, I didn't mean to take it's okay. it away from your... In the old days, they would do that at, at big brokerage houses. They'd bring in the whole team, yeah. and they and they would all discuss their ideas. 
We we did that every morning. Uh, we do that every morning, actually, with our office. But right. um, but in, in we did in, that every morning at the bank as well. Yeah, yeah. like a squawk box, right? Still, you'd have a squawk yeah. box. Yeah. And, yeah, you gather for fifteen minutes, and you just say, "Hey, what what's your best idea today?" And everybody's hearing them, and you know, then you can just take take with it what you will. And um, but anyway, go ahead. Uh, sorry. So you were talking about a possibly new high in the market. Oh yeah, maybe we're yeah. And, and, yeah, and Greg is going to be here. Maybe one more push up in uh, the bonds, one more dip in yields, and then that may be it. So you know, we're close. Uh, in hey, for, hey oh, what, Greg is here. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. hey, what's up, Greg? Oh, was here? How, hey. how was yesterday? What, what's that? How was yesterday the interview? The interview yesterday. I was, yeah. uh, with you? No, with uh, with Blake. With oh, Paul, that that was, you, buddy. Oh, that was, you know, uh, as I was telling everybody a little earlier, I, you know, so just 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 so you guys know, I I'm I I basically am building the case for a long Aussie New Zealand uh, yeah. big reversal China deal shift in central banks. Uh, you know, our RBA is still dovish as the market expect but the rbnz is you know obviously is tilted towards dovish which you know this shift in interest rate you know the uh, expectations is you know tilted the aussie back toward you know towards a stronger aussie anyway when when it's all said and done you know because it just blurred by you know the 10 or 12 minutes i'm like man did i say that did i forget to say that did i I think I forgot to make this point, and I know there's a lot of points that I forgot. So, good news is, is that you guys have me here, and I can, I can, you know, comb through all of my ideas and 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 make sure I tag every point. We're our own worst critics, man. But, it, but you know, also one of the <laughs> other difficult things, and I was trying to explain to 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 some people is there is no there is no host, so it's just me, and. I, I like having a host because uh, hosts are, if, especially if they're good, like Dale, you're thought provoking. So, you know, you think of, you're like, well, well Blake, well, what would you do in this situation based on what you just said? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good point. You know, I, I would do this, that, and then the other thing. And I definitely wouldn't do that. And having a host is always easier because if you have a good host, because they can play off of what you're saying and, 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 and push you or, try to get you uh, tilted in certain directions and point you in certain directions. They help guide you as a, from an interview standpoint. So when you're doing it by yourself, uh, yeah, I have, at, when it was all over, he's like, he's like, so was that it? And I'm like, I think so. <laughs> so <laughs> I, have to, I have to listen to the, to the end result and see if I said everything that I wanted to say, but I know I didn't. I know, you know, thinking about it, I'm like, shoot, I forgot to say this and that. And I, I had some, that. I had some, uh, some, 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 some statistical data on New Zealand and how you know the uh, China and their exports and I forgot to mention all that and, eh, well, you know, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? The show must go on. Show must go on. Episode two. Yeah, maybe we'll have another. Maybe we'll have another one. I Joe Joe really had to beg for me to come on here and I'm, 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 I, I did it for the team and I did it for Joe. I don't know how often I'll do that. I don't, I'm not a big fan. I, I like doing these webinars because I can talk freely with you guys and gals, but, uh, how about but, a quick announcement about Joe's uh, new webinar? Oh yeah. Well, uh, Joe has a new webinar, which is going to be the London close. It's going to be on Wednesdays, uh, which, uh, I think starts the 12th, right? Today's the third. Yeah. Wait, is wait is it the twelfth? I don't know. I have. I have to go uh, back. I, I have a lot of. It's, it's, it's a tenth, isn't it? Wednesday is the tenth. Yeah, it's a week from okay. today. Week from today. So a week from today, it'll start, and uh, it'll be what good. What time? Uh, I you're asking a guy that's time zone illiterate, so it okay. would be Monday probably. One p.m. Uh, it, it, it's going to be one one p.m. Eastern, six o'clock day time. There we go. So it's it's a nice midday for us in the in the in the, in the North American trading time zone. It's like a midday update, if you will. But for if you're you're in London, it's at the end of the day. So you're at the pub watching stuff. Joe. 
Yeah, right, right. All right, well, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Greg, thanks for being here today. Uh, always, always great having your your views, and appreciate you being here with with uh, Steve's absence. So, can can you can you can you can you show me? I, I didn't I didn't ask you in advance, and I'm going to ask you right now. Is it possible you can tell us uh, well, a little bit about the stock market because the stock market is now above the 88% retracement, and frankly, it looks like we're going to new highs. I mean, what what what, what say you? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Will you give me? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm passing it over to you right now. So, I mean, it, you know, the stock market has been unbelievably strong. It looks like we're, you know, anticipating some sort of, you know, some sort of deal with China, um, and stocks just look strong. So, yeah, what do you got here? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, as they will know, I mean, we were warning about this dip that we have seen at the end of last year as a corrective movement we were still at this above this very important lower trend line support connected from 2009 lows in the s p 500 so i was seeing this as the only temporary pullback and the reason was very simple because i have probably better chances to be right if i will label each pullback as a movement rather than a top in place so uh saying said that i mean we have seen a very nice reversal higher clearly after only three waves uh, of decline here so definitely i'm looking to new all-time highs uh, i was expecting they know uh, i was expecting a deeper correction something more complex but it appears that we will just continue straight to the upside and maybe no one will get any good chance to get involved here in this bull trend uh, at lower better prices so i think that maybe a pullback will occur a deeper one but after we will see a push to new highs also, uh, I'm looking at the 10-year U.S. Uh, notes here, uh, or firstly yields, if you want me to cover this. I mean, there was a very nice reversal to the upside. We also talked about this uh, overlay chart in, uh, in our web webinar a few weeks back. So what I was highlighting back then is that the S&P 500 was constantly bullish since December lows. And I saw a potential bottom formation, or at least I saw the 10-year uh, US notes moving into resistance. So if I said if the yields will really move to the upside when notes will coming down, then obviously the S&P 500 could just accelerate to the upside because it was already trading um, higher on itself. Okay, so with the help of the 10-year US yields, it was just another. Um, it caused just another acceleration to the upside. So I think since we are seeing only first lag here from the lows, but we know that any reversal in the markets from the Elliott Wave perspective should be made by minimum three waves, then I clearly expect that this S&P 500 will resume to new all-time highs because, as I said, this is, let's say, wave A, wave B, expect wave C to the upside, so which means more gains here can mean more gains for the S&P 500. And also, based on a near-term or short-term trading perspective, what I would love to see is potential fill of this gap that occurred on Sunday. So we also talked about this yesterday. Still, we haven't seen any reversal lower, so I'll just patiently wait if this pullback will occur. In such case, there can be a chance to get in on some yen crosses. Uh, so I really like how Cadian is trading at the moment. We are seeing some very nice um, structure to the upside. It looks like an impulse in progress. So still waiting on this wave four to show up, and then maybe we catch the upside for a wave five. Um, <clears throat> if we have any questions about any Yang crosses, we I can cover them. Hi, how are you, Greg? Hey, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I just stepped away for a second. Yeah, you were looking for a pullback in Aussie Yen to get long. It looks like uh, we're heading I mean, up. Okay. So there's yeah, still the potential there's, of a pullback here. Yes, I still, I mean, we are at this very important swing highs here at the yeah. top side of this uh, range. So let's assume that this gap, Sunday gap, will be filled. And maybe we'll still get this, uh, get this deeper pullback in wave E here. or if not, if this market will just continue straight up, then obviously, wave was very small and finished 
already uh, at this swing low. Uh, so for now, I still have to be very patient uh, and definitely from a trading perspective, I would rather see a deeper pullback than going okay. to here at the upper side of the trading range. Can I, can I ask you about uh, yields here, Grega? I know we covered it. Uh, do you consider this recent pullback that we were getting in bonds like a four and there's one more low or you're looking for, it looks like you're looking for a higher low? Um, okay. Some guys are calling it a four. You you already have it complete at five. Yes, I'm looking at okay. Five. Yes, okay. because I mean it can be a way four, but since it's a very sharp decline, I still think this is only four slack. So much lower prices will be seen probably. In such case, you would likely see also a broken trend line. And if that happens, if you see a broken trend line connected from waves two and waves four, then you may assume that we are in a higher degree correction, corrective pullback rather than a lower degree that would expect uh, to send prices even higher within wave five. So with that being said, uh, I assume that we are already here in a uh, higher degree cycle. Okay. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, you know, the dollar, everyone's saying right here, Grega, that a breakout in the dollar over 97.80 is a layup. You know, I put out a tweet and someone said, even Charlie Brown knows we're going to break out over 97.80. Do you see the potential that the Dixie might be, uh, uh, you know, surprising people with maybe one more shot down before that happens? Uh, I mean, if since we are consolidating, let's assume that this was a triangle, maybe already finished, well, then move to the upside, the new high should unfold in five waves. And it looks like deep can be a wave four. Okay. It's not sharp, so not really sure that it's completed. But uh, also if you take a look at the Euro dollar, okay, it can also be a wave four here still unfolding. And if you recall yesterday, we said that this right. can be a very nice resistance area, the former area of, of wave four of one lesser degree. And since it's only first leg up, I mean, it's a resistance, but can be only temporary setback for some way B, then a retest of 38.2% and then a new low. Okay, so, yeah. would that yeah. change if we got above the high that we're having right now after a pullback, if we, uh, your count that we're, uh, I just saw one count that would almost allow for, uh, on the daily for it to, the euro to even challenge at 114 level again before it goes to, you know, lower levels. Some type of uh, irregular, yeah, uh, irregular, irregular flat. You mean? Something yeah, like yeah, yeah. That's I probably mean, what it is. Well, yeah. I mean, for now, I will stick with this count. But if we okay. are starting to building gains here above this uh, March twenty fifth levels, okay, then probably I would adjust the fuse. But again, uh, in such case, if we trade at one point thirteen, then we would be back in this very messy price action big right. range middle of the range actually so there will be again a lot of different interpretations available even triangles here for a wave four, four or maybe even wave b so i mean it's still euro dollar no man's land we are going nowhere actually here with any clear breakouts yet so okay so you know greg uh, uh of course there are lots of elliott wave practitioners and you know i asked this to other people because you know I, I've been able to witness your work for over two years now. So, you know, I I have confidence in your counts and your alternates and where things are invalidated. What would you say? And I know you probably look at uh, other people that practice Elliott Wave. What distinguishes your work from other Elliotticians? What would you say? Because I'm very flexible. It's not about the analysis. Okay, okay, but it's about how you approach to the analysis with your trading setup. Okay. okay, so I can have multiple wave counts, but the key is that from those multiple wave counts, you find the probability rather than possibility. And once uh, and when you will discover the clear wave patterns, then you can start with your trading, or building, or working on your trading approach and potential trade setups. Okay, so uh, even though you have a preferred count, you would say your flexibility to go to the alternate, uh, where some people will be stubborn with their preferred and. I, I'm not, yes, I'm not making the wave counts to 
to predict where the market will go in the next few months, but I'm making the wave cons to find my trading setup. Which is different. Yes, of course it's different because I can be wrong on the long term, but on the short term, it's still current WaveCon can still produce a very nice trading setup for the next few weeks. But on the long run, I mean, and on the long yes, I can be wrong with the WaveCon, but still it can be a very nice trading setup. So it's all about the trading. It's not analysis. As I said, several times right. I made, I make, I don't know, 100 charts per week, maybe even more, but yeah. maybe I will not find any interesting trading setup and I will not trade at all. So it's uh, it's about tracking the markets and once you see, once you're confident with what you see, then you're ready to pull the trigger. I know that what? there are yeah. followers who will say, you are wrong here, you are wrong here. Yes, okay, I was wrong, but I was striking it, but never pulled the trigger. That's the different story. So okay. it is what to trade and what not to trade. Okay, you know what I've noticed is uh, I was just going to say that so important for people to understand. So important for people to understand that. Yeah. So, Greg, what I've noticed with you is um, your highest conviction trades are when you have uh, maybe a primary count, and then you have another count that long term might be different, but short term, uh, you know, one might be you know uh, bearish. And another one might be saying uh, bullish, but predicting a short-term correction, and you don't know which way it's going to go. But when they're both pointing in a trade direction, those seem to be your highest conviction trades. Am I correct in reading that? Yes, exactly. And that's that. That's what it's all about. It's not about uh, only analysis, but as I said, it's how you trying to apply analysis into your trading. So the good example was here on gold as we yeah. discussed several times on this goal. So clearly that's definitely a very good case for uh, to learn from different approaches to uh, but to find a very good trading setup. Yeah, because they're so, both pointing in, in the same direction. Long term, it uh, you don't know which is going to end up manifesting, but short term, they're both saying the same thing. Yes, exactly. So All right, long that's term, beautiful. you're looking down, short term, uh, so, sorry, uh, long term here we were looking down for a wave C, yeah. or we are still making this higher wave before we see a very big drop into wave C below 1000. But on the short term, uh, either we way, were, they were both good for 50 bucks. Yes, exactly. Okay, buddy. I tell you, man, you guys need to be able to see Grega's work every day, and the best way to do it is to subscribe. Uh, with us or subscribe with Greg. Anyway, can I, uh, can, I, can, I, can, I can I mention sure. something too? You know, when we're talking about trades, um, this is really one of those markets, and I know Greg will agree with me on this. And this is one of the beauties of Elliott Wave Analysis. This is not a momentum market. Obviously, we have very low volatility. Um, momentum doesn't really pick up in in any. Uh, any general direction, especially with any of the majors or any of the, you know, any, any of the majors in the FX market. This is a market where you have to let the market actually come to you and be very, um, you know, selective in your, your trade, you know, just very, very, very good in your trade selection. And one of the things about Elliott Waves that I really appreciate is the fact that it's really setups that allow the market to come back to you to resume a, an overall trend or theme that you you are you are playing into, so um, and and that's and that's what you know. Going back to what Grega was saying is, you know, he'll look at a hundred different charts and not even see anything that's worth taking a trade. He may post some charts, but it doesn't mean he's pulling the trigger. And that's, you know, I, I I'm like Grega, and and I'm I know a lot of us are. We look at so many different charts, but it's important to let the, the, the trade actually come to you and, and play into what your overall uh, idea is. So anyway, okay. I just wanted to mention that. Well, I'm not, thank you, Blake. I'm not sure Lydia's here yet, Greg. So if you have time for one more, uh, Mohanad is asking about the guppy. And Lydia, if you're here, can you send me a question? Go ahead, buddy, if you have time for the um, guppy. Uh, or kiwi. Uh, pound yen or uh, pound kiwi. Okay. 
Yeah, it's unusual. Lydia is usually early. Right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, found the end. I mean, it's. It looks like it made five waves of decline, and we rallied in three waves so far. We stopped at 61.8% at the moment. So, I'm just wondering if we'll see a sell-off here for wave C before market moves to the upside. And actually, this wave C could again come in play if stocks will come a little bit lower and trying to, to fill that gap as we discussed earlier. Uh, on Pound Kiwi, this one is quite interesting and that's probably the wave structure, which I call it, that has a clarity. This is very important when it comes to Elliott Wave, as we've been so many times. Track and pay attention to clear patterns. And this is very clear. Strong drop, and very slow overlapping yeah. core. So, yeah. I mean, this should be a correction if this was an impulse. So, corrections are choppy, slow, and you will see plenty of moves in both directions, while impulse are fast. So, if you are able to recognize those two, then you know in which direction market should continue when correction is completed. Obviously, in the same direction, like we have seen the previous impulse. Right. So, right. This one is very clear. I mean, we probably will retest those previous swing highs once more, around 61.8%, and then we, I will we could, be watching for our Yeah, we could get a wave three. Uh, it's a money wave. Uh, do you uh, kind of look at uh, wave threes as uh, being your preferred trades to look for? Because they can be big extensions of you know, a prior wave. I really like wave three, but it's very hard to stay involved in wave three and catch the whole move if you are tracking markets on a daily basis because you know that within wave three, there yeah. will be pullbacks. And sometimes fourth, uh, fourth wave pullbacks within wave three can also be deep. So right. in such case, it's not very easy to, to survive the whole ride within wave three. Uh, so I rather build my trades on the minimum expectations, which means I would focus rather than in wave C. So even uh, in wave C rather than wave three. So even if this can be a wave three to the downside, which yeah. means markets are, as you know, much much lower compared to the wave C, I still will assume, okay, maybe this will be only wave C to the downside. So in such right. case, I should make the proper risk reward scenario because if suddenly this would become way free, then of course, a reward would be even even better. What a great, you know what, you're a natural teacher too, Greg, besides being a, a, a very good trader, excellent analyst. Uh, uh, if I can understand things, then most people can. So I really <laughs> appreciate, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you can't teach an old dog new tricks and uh, we all know yeah. how old I am. Yeah, uh, I, I just talked with some members earlier. I said that um, I have son with his six years old, uh -huh. and, I, and he co comes into my office and I showed him charts yeah, and yeah. he's looking what are these. And I said, look, here's sugar and here's here's cocoa. If sugar goes down and cocoa goes down, we can buy a lot of chocolate. If cocoa <laughs> and sugar goes up, we cannot. <laughs> so for him, these are like steps. So the first approach into the markets with Elliott Waves. So uh, I, I assume your son is uh, hoping for a bear market in both. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right, buddy? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then and then after you give him chocolate, um, I'm thinking you're hoping uh, and sugar that you're hoping for a bull market in both. Yeah. After he gets real uh, real hyper on the chocolate. Uh, <laughs> he, he would eat everything. I mean, yeah. his sister would probably. <laughs> Graga, uh, thank you so much, my trading warrior brother. I, I, uh, I'm not sure. It's very unusual. I've interviewed Lydia, I don't know, 20 times over the years, and she's not yeah, here. Yeah, it is kind of rare. So uh, I could try and raise her on Twitter. She's probably busy, but um, if you want to... What? If you check the email or on Twitter, maybe she contacted you. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for. Her. Anyway, it's unusual. Uh, it's up to you, Blake. What do you? What? What's your call? 
Um, you, you know, uh, well, I mean, if she's not here, she's not here. It's just, yeah. it, you know, she's usually here, which is weird. She's I'm, uh, one of those. I'm going to send can, her a tweet. Okay, I can take a look at Ruta. I can take a look at Ozzy against New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, Let's, please do. That'd be great. Thank you, yes. Greg. And also, we talked with Daryl this. We called this one, I think it was last week. He asked me because he had his own interest in this pair what i'm thinking about it and actually it was a very nice deep free wave decline right into the 61.8 percent there was a wedge called an ending diagonal in elliott wave terms and also free wave decline was completed under and since we are turning very nicely to the upside i think that actually this is a five wave recovery i think that more upside will be seen and personally i'm also interested to, to buy this one, but after a pullback. So uh, let's assume that we are now in a wave five here. Uh -huh. um, okay, just let me pull. So we a lot of big moving averages at 107 at your C target up there. Um, and I think it's a close to a, some type of fib or trade uh -huh. of the decline. So you're looking for a push above Jen to new highs of the year. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean maybe that's a very small wedge ending diagonal here. Yeah. So yeah. watch out for another push higher and then I hope that we get a pullback. So this is analysis, okay? And I sometimes I receive questions, whatever, or critics that Gregor, you were wrong, market did not move to the downside from that level, okay? And I say, okay, this is the analysis I'm talking about. This is the analysis with my trading approach, so it means if I will see this pullback, it would be good because I would be looking for potential longs. But if we don't get this pullback, I'm fine. I have no problems with that because I definitely will not short it, this market at the highs because we are changing the direction into a higher degree bullish cycle. So that's very Can I important. say something, Greg? Because I know you go through it and a lot of guys in the business go through it. You know, there are just some people out there, Greg, that uh, hope others are wrong um, to justify and rationalize their own failures. And uh, you just have to move on and realize that that's really it and hope they do better. But, uh, you know, uh, no one can call every jiggle, every move in the market, and no one, and good traders like great surfers, I put out this tweet, great surfers do not try and catch every wave. They, too, wait for good setups. Yeah, exactly. Very good point. Yeah, so, and uh, I've noticed you do it. The whole team does it. So... Uh, you know, any detractors, uh, Greg, I'd let it just roll off your shoulders. You're a pro and everyone I work with. And I, I think today's our anniversary, a two year happy anniversary, Greg, uh, two years on face. Uh, it's been great working with you. Huh? Wait, it's two years of face, not to yeah, of face, of face, yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, face. You, yeah, you were here, uh, you know, uh, I Greg think you were before that. that. Very beginning, yes. The very yeah. Beginning. What was it? An extra year before we started phase play? I think I think it was about a year. Yeah, maybe yeah. about nine months or a year or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I know I was chasing you for a, a long time. Hire me, hire me, hire me. So I know that you guys were in beta and then everything else. And uh, I want to thank you guys for bringing me on board. It's been one of my best FX experiences in my career. Well, and thank you. Uh, really uh thank you i i you know people say well dale you know you're bullish on the team because you're you know you're part of the team um uh, but i'm bullish on the team because i've seen the team in action for two years and i've interviewed thousands of people and i you know in my uh subjective opinion it's the best team ever assembled in the fx world at least in this era so Thank you, guys. Uh, I don't think Lydia is going to be here today, so yeah, uh, we'll wrap it. And right. uh, and thank you, uh, Grega, again mm -hmm. for uh, hanging out with us. And Blake, uh, thank you for hiring me. <laughs> thank and you, guys. And Grega, really appreciate you being here. And Coach, yeah. the Face Webinar would not be the Face Webinar without you. Okay. Well, uh, it, and thank God. 
the face webinar doesn't show my face anymore. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, <laughs> I use old pictures on Twitter now, Blake. So anyway, uh, everyone, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. If you appreciate what we've done here for a couple of years, today's a great day to celebrate it by becoming a subscriber. And with that being said, uh, everyone have a great day. Go hang out with Blake and the other pros in member chat, and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Thanks, Bye -bye. guys. All right, Bye -bye. guys. Adios. Bye. That's a wrap.